welcome to today's session on our new reservation system. Thank you so much for joining today in our team tips session. Uh, we're gonna be started in just a moment, moment, but before we do, I wanted to go over a few things that happen in Teams Live, just in case this is your first time attending with us. So Teams Live does have a moderated chat. You can access that to the right side of your screen. You'll see an option to ask a question. If you have any questions on the content that we're covering today, feel free to submit it there. And you can submit any kind of feedback or information that you want us to have there as well. Since it's moderated, it takes us just a moment to review those inquiries and have our moderator get back to you and respond to you directly. In that chat too, we've posted a welcome announcement. So if you'll navigate over there and give it a thumbs up, that just ensures to us that you know how to find it and that you'll be able to interact today during our session. In addition, if you should need closed captioning, it's at the bottom right corner of your screen, as well as language translation. Teams Live does allow for languages, up to six different languages to be able to tr be translated live during the presentation. And another bonus for Teams Live is if you need to pause at any time in today's session or rewind to go back to understand some of the content, you're going to be able to do that. So those are all of our Teams Live basics. I'm Amanda Pritchard. I'm the Microsoft 365 Specialist at UT Dallas. And I'm so thankful to welcome you all here today. This is a new system that we're going to be offering. Uh, so I know there was some confusion about what it even is because we haven't had this before. We haven't necessarily had to have a service like this uh, to go campus wide. So the reservation system is, think of it just like if you're booking a hotel room, if you're booking a movie theater seat or any kind of uh, space where you're reserving a specific designated space for yourself. The intention is that using this software, you will be able to reserve a desk or an office in a shared workspace so that you could select your specific location and reserve it using this software. Uh, another term that this you'll often hear called with this type of service is called hoteling. So just being able to move around from place to place and find a space that suits your unique needs. So I'm gonna, before we get started, uh, Brizade is gonna be speaking today, but before uh, she starts with her presentation, I was gonna introduce you to a couple of events that we do have coming up within the next few weeks. We try to offer these trainings regularly. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those slides pulled up. We try to offer these regularly so that you'll be able to uh, attend these and get the training that you need in order to be successful. The next training that we have next week at two is Enlist. It is a, a tool through Microsoft that helps you manage all of your lists. If you have a number of products or procedures, communications, anything that you have developed that needs to go out that you need to be able to track and manage. This is a very simple, easy to use tool where you can track and everything in the list and in multiple categories. So that is a, a product that we already have that's already out there. And we wanna be able to share some use cases with you so that you can take advantage of that. And by popular demand, we had Excel training just a few weeks ago and it was so well received that, that we had a request for it to come again at a more advanced level to build off of the basics that we learned in that introductory session. So on December 14th, right before Christmas break, we're offering Excel 2.0. It's a level 200 class, which is just a one step up. Um, and so we've got Microsoft that's gonna be hosting that session and go through piece by piece some aspects in um, Excel so that you can enhance your learning there. So the link is UTD link slash OIT training. We'll have that in the chat in just a second as well, in case you'd like to register. All right. Going back to today, our reservation system, I'm so thrilled and privileged to introduce today's speaker. This is Brazada's first time doing a team tip session with us, and we are very privileged to have her. She has been spearheading this project and been working diligently behind the scenes on ensuring that this product is going to be properly released and distributed to campus as soon as we're finished testing it. So without further ado, 
Rosetta, thank you so much for sharing with us what you've been working on and developing. I can't wait for campus to see uh, what you've got put together for us. Yay, thank you for having me, Amanda. Um, as mentioned, my name is Briseida Luna. I'm an ITSS2 specialist here at OIT with UTD. And this is my first team's tip. Um, and I think I do need to register to that Excel training because what I realized is I need more help. Um, so in order to get started, I am very excited to showcase this to everyone because this will be allowing everyone to have more flexibility and collaborate with other people, especially with this new you know, work environment that we're trying to adjust with this new world that we have going on. Uh, so in order to get started, our next slide will basically give you an introduction regarding the member user. Um, the member user is everyone and anyone in the system. So whenever you create an account, if you can go to the next slide, we'll, you'll be logging in into single sign-on. Basically, there's no need to go into a pre-created link or, or request anything in advance within the system. Once your department has requested that within Atlas, you'll be able to populate your employees. So single sign-on is the easiest thing to get you uploaded. Once you're there, when you're the first time user, you'll be getting you know, basic information regarding your preference account, um, notifications, and building information of where you'll be located. On the next slide, it'll continue regarding booking a desk. This is very simple and easy. If you can go to the movies, make your hotel reservations, like Amanda mentioned, this is just basically the same thing. You'll be selecting your dates preference of, we you know, the time and date of what, when you need this desk. And once you click booking a desk, you'll be able to see what's available for what you've requested and those certain selections. On the next slide, you'll be able to see what's available for what you've clicked on and selected with parting your amenities. What I've learned is that these colors actually mean a thing. So blue desks are basically what you've highlighted on that is available for that time. That basically shows you the location of where you actually are for that moment. Um, light gray would be basically your desks that are do not meet the amenities that you have requested. And dark gray will be that Basically, these are not available for the time. Someone else has taken them over and you'll have to move on. Once you've selected on clicking a reservation, which is circled here, you'll be able to receive a confirmation email. And honestly, you'll be all set. Regarding on the preferences, you may or may not have to confirm your reservation about um, an hour before you get to your location. So that can be modified regarding everyone's account. Um, on the next slide regarding that, we'll be seeing additional information. You know, the next slide, it will be office. This is basically your home page. Um, every member, this is everything you'll see. We do have scheduling there, but scheduling is kind of a different monster. And at this moment, we're not really touching that. It basically links your Outlook calendar to that and any schedules. And since everyone's different, especially with OIT, we haven't touched that yet. And this is why we're in the pilot phase. We're learning what we have in place and what can be used regarding different departments. So this is office space. You can see the amenities regarding the locations of the floor map, the where the desks are located. If you see the lower green ones, those are our main OIT employee desks. The one on top, we just started for our help desk student workers, and they are actually loving it. I've been in the office and I actually seen a couple of them down here with us. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. They're able to integrate and, you know, collaborate with us, which is what's beautiful about this, because you can see employees that you really don't see in, you know, your normal day to day if you were to have been in the office, especially with right now I've, within our department. Um, everyone's kind of scattered. If anyone's here, you probably think you're alone, but you're not. <laughs> There's actually someone around here. So these just actually help us to kind of point, pinpoint people and see where we can find a certain employee. So this is your homepage. On the next slide, I'll, I'll show you profiles. This is where you can see your desks that have been reserved. You can manage that and cancel that. Obviously, when I did this, I did not have any reservations made. But once I had confirmed anything, these will all pop up here. 
On the next slide, it will just be user settings regarding your profile. You'll be able to upload a picture, notification preference, and workplace preferences. Um, I mentioned workplace preferences just because within OIT, we do have teams on campus. We have the tech bar, the AD building with their desktop support, and we have our location here at The Rock. So within our department, we have three locations and maybe someone from our AD team with desktop support wants to come into The Rock. They could be able to select the location here at The Rock and use that area. So this is where you'll be able to update that information. On the next slide, we'll have the mobile app. Mobile app makes it super easy. Granted, this is still in the works. I know I've had some issues, but this is why we're here and we're showcasing this. We're trying to see what needs to be worked on, what do our employees need, and move forward from there. But this has been great regarding just booking things without having to pull up your laptop. You just download it. You'll see the little red R logo, and that's that's home page. So that's what you download. On the next part, or let me pause. Is there anything, Amanda, that I need to touch on base? We have a couple of questions. Yeah, okay. we have a couple of questions so far in the chat. Um, and one of them, I think this is a great use case. Will users be able to book a room in another department? No. So I mentioned the different locations regarding um, OIT with the Rock Technology Bar and AD. Um, there, we have modified our preferences for our employees to be able to do that. If your department only has one location, your department will only be able to book for that certain location. If you were to have two different locations on campus with that one department, you'll have those two spots. But someone in HR could not reserve a desk in OIT. So there are um, admin preferences and modifications that can manage that. Obviously, probably me as an admin, I would be able to do that, but that's not my place, so I will not do that. <laughs> okay, so I'm sorry, friends. I think that everybody just wanted to come visit us in The Rock because we do have some really cool equipment to test out and to use there. And I was just going to mention, Brzeda, so we asked a question in the chat just to get a feel from everybody as to um, if they're hybrid or fully remote or fully, you know, on campus, because we know every department is personalizing it and doing it differently. So we did get some interesting feedback on, you know, several groups that are fully, um, some that are hybrid, some that are in person. Um, so it's just, it's interesting to see how every department has their own unique way of addressing this. But even if you're remote, hybrid, or fully in person, being able to reserve desks and shared um, locations is useful and applicable to everyone because everyone can then get together and have a group meeting even if they're not necessarily desks together in the same space. Yeah, definitely. It enhances that collaboration time. Um, and I know I'm kind of going through this a little faster, not providing much information, but there'll be a live demonstration. I'll be hitting key points of what I think it will be most important and useful for everyone that would like to get into this system. Um, our next page goes into the admin user profile and what you see. As an admin user, you'll basically have more availability to different tabs. As you can see here, here the authors and scheduling is the simple schedules of everyone regarding their front home page. You'll see people, analytics, maps, visits, and manage as an admin user. Um, visits, it's actually something very new, and as you can see, there's still a little beta testing. Um, that was released. Well, it's actually not even released yet. We got just special privilege to get that out there in testing. For people, that's where you'll be able to add users to your system. Analytics is basically downloading data and reservation information in order to see how frequently desk has been reserved or who's using what and so on. Maps basically maps. You see the floor maps of your department in the system and you'll be able to edit that information. And visits, I think it's very cool with this new um, testing that they have with visits because you'll be able to make reservations for people outside of the system. So not only could I make a reservation for someone in a different department with UTD, but I'll be able to get a desk for maybe a visitor outside the UT system as a whole. I'll be able to reserve that information at notes and once I'm making that reservation and they'll be able to receive that in their end within the email. 
and then manage. That's what you'll basically get in the nitty gritty regarding the account, the roles regarding the departments and admin users and offices and information. On the next slide, I like to highlight, like, highlight these four things regarding the office homepage. These are basically the go to spot for making the edits regarding and within the system and editing your layout and adding amenities and so on. So I, I feel like these are probably the four main things to look at regarding as an admin user on top of manage. These are probably the things that need the most focused. On the next slide, we'll be able to see the analytics page. It takes you directly to what today's desk reservations data is for. Obviously, on 11 5th, everything was available. It was 8.30 p.m. I don't think anybody wanted to be in the office at 8.30 p.m. So that exactly explains why a total of six desks were available for that time. But within here, you'll be able to actually click on the timeline area and you'll be able to manage what days you want to see the information for. If you wanted to see it for the past two weeks or three months, you'll be able to edit, download, and see it within your system. And once we get into the live demo, I'll be able to show what some of those downloads and Excel spreadsheets information contain. On the next slide is the maps and the points of interest. This is very helpful, especially for those who have forgotten where things are after being gone for so long from the department or the office. It highlights um, your basic needs regarding the front desk, break room, printer, restrooms, and there's a lot of pre-made points of interest for you to add in within the system. Defibrillator, that's probably a good one to add. That's probably have to go somewhere near a receptionist area, so I'm learning as we're doing this. And you can actually custom make ones as well if there's a special um, amenity that your department has and there's a central location for that, you'll be able to drag and drop and type in what that is. And people will, who are reserving and joining their desk, they'll be able to see where those amenities are. On the next page, this is basically where I hit on earlier visits. And this is what it looks like. It's very simple. You'll be able to select the building that you want this person to have their reservation in and their date. You'll be able to edit the time. Um, host, that basically will be you. Or as an admin user, you I could be able to make Amanda the host and make the reservation for her and her guest. And then on the type, basically, it's just visitors types and information regarding that of, of the employee who's actually visiting or the vendor and so on. You can go to the next slide. This is basically all the tedious and great information that you need within the system. This is where it gets down and dirty regarding adding the employees, searching employees, creating groups. Groups, I like to think of them as the departments within the system. Right now, we only have the OIT department and we do have research in there as a bit of them trying to test the system as well. Um, roles, you have, I think there's about four already pre-created roles for um, admin users, but within those roles, you can create your own special roles. So I know they mentioned if someone else from an outside department can create a reservation in a different department. This is where roles comes into place. You'll have different um, background information for everyone regarding the roles and what they can do and can't not do once in their system. So everyone basically is uploaded as a group department, and then those employees will have access to a certain area or team department and so on. And this is basically all the information for now. Um, this is coming for spring 2022. We have been getting some requests regarding them within Atlas. Um, and I'm sorry if not everyone has received a response yet, but we are trying our best to make sure that whoever gets the system within their department gets all the information they need in order to make this successful for them. Um, I know I'm asking even people here within OIT to test it out, give me their feedback, see what's going on. Is the app being friendly user? Are you having any issues on the website? And so on. So stay tuned and this should be coming soon. <laughs> Thank you.
Well, thank you so much, Prasada. I know we're going to give her just a second to transition because uh, I would assume now that you know a little bit more about the product and the software that's being developed, that you probably all would like a demonstration so you can see what it's actually like to use it and to work with it yourself. So we're gonna give her just a second to pull that up and get logged in. And I was gonna address just a couple of the questions and see if uh, Brzeda could answer a few of these because we are getting some along the, the similar thread here. Um, the primary one being, is this, is this application, this software only available for um, staff full-time employees or is it also Brzeda available for students if I wanted to give my students access on managing some of the desks within our office space, would that be available to them? So students are definitely able of reserving within the system. And as I mentioned, roles, that can be edited for a student worker to basically manage and move around desk. If you do want to have a student worker to have that access, that is totally doable. That role can be created for them to be able to do those on their end. So student workers are able to be uploaded in the system, make reservations themselves, and edit as an admin user if needed. I, I mean, like I've mentioned, we have our help desk area where we have our student workers um, re reserving these desks and using them. But if there is a student worker who would be helping me, let's say, in making changes and following up with the layouts of the office, they can have that access and be able to do that on their end as well. And I think one other uh, quick clarification is that this system is not meant to replace rooms that you may have in Outlook that are already um, there, such as a shared conference room or something that's already bookable in Outlook as a resource. It's not meant to replace or to take away from that. This would just be really for those shared workspaces where you're gonna have people coming in and out of. So I know that was a question we had as well. Um, other question was, this one's getting a little trickier. If it's a non-student employee, um, so I guess an, you know an outside visitor that mm -hmm. wanted to come in, if you had a vendor, say, coming in, wanting to just say, I, I wanted to spend the day here and I need to get some work done, I'm at a conference, whatever the situation, would they be able to come in and uh, be able to book a space using this system so that they could have a desk to work at during their time at UT Dallas? Yes, and that's where visits come in place. Um, obviously, that visitor will not have access to the system, but if you have that relationship with that vendor, you can be the one making that reservation and basically reserving the desk for them and providing the parking pass or any other information that they'll need for that visit. Okay, and one more question real quick, because I like this question a lot. Bruce always gives us the, the tough questions and I, I love and appreciate this insight because I also want to understand how does this work with bookings? Um, so bookings is a tool that we use to, to book appointments such as uh, advising or, or counseling or, or interviews. We use bookings for all sorts of applications. Would it be able to interact or connect with bookings or is this something that very much just kind of stands alone for desk reservations? Um, I think it can definitely be molded within bookings. Um, there is a part of integrations regarding the manage aspect of it. And uh, we've integrated the single sign-on system and it does connect, let you connect to Office 365 and Exchange. Um, honestly, I feel like this is a question that I can totally bring out to our contact with Robin and they'll be able to assist and help us out in making that, if that's something that a, a department really needs and wants. That's perfect. And this is just to reiterate, it's not available for general release just yet. Y'all yeah. are getting our sneak peek private viewing session of this because we are still actively testing. I, I saw that we did have a couple volunteer attributes to be able to test and to, to work with the system so they can be on the cutting edge of developing this for UT Dallas. Right now, it's not accessible to everyone, but it will, we will be launching it in spring. Um, so just once we get back from Christmas break, we should be able to have a lot more people access and start utilizing it. But we wanted you to be able to see it, know it's coming and understand if it's something that's a good fit for your area, um, because you also need to make sure your space, right? Your space has to be configured with those desks numbered and assigned so that you can be ready to have people reserve them and utilize the software. Okay, Rosetta, 
I am so excited to be able to see a preview of this. So are you ready or do you think they, we can show everybody? I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> so this is our home page and is our office tab, as I mentioned before. Um, I do want to showcase here that there is another person in here. Um, and I am actually in one of our rooms as well. Yay, so I'm actually testing out. This is the first time I'm actually in this cube. Um, it's a little different. I really had to get situated. I Honestly, I feel like that's probably the one of the main things people mention when they're reserving it. It's like, I think what takes me the longest is just trying to adjust monitors and get situated and, you know, get the chair how I want it. I'm like, and, and that's what happens even at home sometimes to try to get that pillow comfy on the back and, you know, make sure dogs are quiet and whatnot. So it's kind of the same thing. You have your area where you can get um, comfy and get your day started. So right here shows that I have made my reservation today from 12.24 to 4 p.m. And this is why I'll be doing my whole presentation. So I think this is fun and way of me actually getting to learn the system itself as well. Um, I want to show how simple it is to book a desk. Um, right now, I'm actually in the system as an admin user. You can see from here that I have the additional tabs. Um, if I wanted to make a reservation, let's say for Thursday, I would just click on that date. I don't think I want to be here at 6 a.m. Let's just say 8 a.m. That sounds nice to me. Um, once I have that confirmed, I will click on book a desk. Once you click on book a, a desk, you'll be able to see your end time and amenities. That doesn't pop up at first, but once you select that, you'll be able to edit that. Um, I don't think I use I want to be here at 11 p.m. on a Thursday. So let me edit that and change that to 5 p.m. Um, there, perfect. You can actually see that I made the updates. Once I go to amenities, um, I, I have a different need for that day. Like today, I needed a USB camera. That is very, definitely much needed with Teams tips. Um, this is a fun thing that we added. We realized that not everyone purchased a parking pass, especially with the people not seeing the need of being on campus daily. Um, so that was something that we added here as an amenity. Our cubes within the staff um, area, they do have a green parking pass attached to them. Um, I can actually see mine just tabbed right here at the desk. So that is something that it just makes it a lot easier and probably more welcoming for those who are not on campus all the time. They are able to get that parking pass, not worry. The only sad part is that you have to get off the car come in here, get situated, and then go back and put the parking pass in your camera. But I think I appreciate those extra steps. I don't know about everyone else, but that's just me. Um, other than that, I'll let's say if you do want a more closed area like how I am here today, I am actually one of our office cubes and I added that as an amenity. Maybe you do not want to be in a completely open area and have the, you want the opportunity to close the door and have that private time. That is an amenity that can be added and selected here. So I'm gonna just select those for my amenities for Thursday, click apply. And then you'll see here below that these two are the only ones available for that day. So I can also be able to drop down here and see the ones. If you can tell, we temporarily named our hotel reservation desk as sports fans, Cowboys and Mavs. Currently, I'm in Cowboys and Cowboys looks like it's available for November 11th. So if I select that, I'll be able to reserve. Since I'm as an admin, it asks who I want who I want to reserve it for. But as a regular user, it'll just be reserved for yourself. So let's see. Um, do I want to make it for Pullen Boss? Let's see if I can do that. Yeah, let's do it for Pullen. He's going to get an email from me saying that I reserved a desk for him on Thursday. He may or may not want to actually come into the office. So let's confirm that. Obviously, he is not going to come here and I can cancel that reservation. But I think this is very easy. And I love the fact that you can see cancel reservation as soon as you make that if you are having doubts of being in the office or if there's something that came up abruptly right after that, you can quickly cancel that. And then you or that person who you make that reservation for will get that email that the, that the reservation has been canceled. And let's move Colin out of that. <laughs> um, is there any questions or anything, Amanda? Well, I just went ahead and posted in the chat, Rosetta, because I figured it might be slightly contentious between a few people, depending on how you name those uh, desk reservations. <laughs> so 
if you have a different reservation name that you wanted to submit to us just to get some ideas rolling out there, we're going to get your suggestions in if you want to submit some, uh, and we'll draw a random prize winner from those recommendations. But I thought it would be fun to hear if you could name it anything, what would you name it? And the second clarification was, I was very confused about amenities because I was expecting like shampoo and, and mint, like, but I guess that's not what we have available in our hotel system. No, definitely not. I think if maybe if you make a reservation for a whole week, maybe we can probably get you some extra amenities. Um, or like bonus school. points or something. Like it, I feel like we should be accruing something so that along the way I can get my rapid rewards from, from, right. from using these systems. We'll get a tent set up and, you know, we'll, we'll figure it out. But yes, I know everyone is not a fan of the Texans or Mavs or personally not a fan of the Astros. But yes, this is what we're playing around with right now. So, you know, send your suggestions and win a lovely prize. Okay. So moving forward, I want to highlight the edit floor. As mentioned, you get these four Hail Mary it's this is where all the stuff is uh, and it has taken me a while to actually learn it It keeps changing honestly and this is the beauty of technology it keeps evolving and we can all keep learning um, with configurations this is something where you can assign a desk or basically if you are trying to limit your capacity and have some social distances distancing you'll be able to actually see that within your desk obviously you can see their desk right here and help this area or not really a social distance, but we do have, you know, pillars and platforms that does divide um, student workers from sitting next to each other. And then if we go down here, you can see the same thing. I mean, I'm in my cube. I'm not really next to anyone, so that's totally fine. With limit capacity here, you can basically reduce the amount of people that can make a reservation for certain days within the system. Um, and you are able to modify. There's 13 desks within our department right now. So if I want to limit that to 10, I can totally do that. And I know with the current world situation, it might just ease some people's minds and making sure that not everyone is on campus when you're on campus. It'd probably be nicer with parking too. <laughs> um, with a sign, we, do have some admin offices here, and these are the ones that are assigned to um, Frank Fegans, Brian Dorothy. Um, I think Peggy's in here or not, but these are desks for people who have their location within the office. Obviously, right now, everyone within OIT does have their desk and permanent location, um, but we don't basically want to waste our desk um, number within all the assigned seating right now. But if you do have someone who does have a certain location and you do want to pinpoint them on the map, this is where you'll be able to assign them. And just to you know, every time you go within the system, if you make any changes, you have to review and publish them in order to be active for everyone else. So once you're in the system and make a change and publish it, everyone will see it. But it's very easy to go back and correct them any mistakes that you happen to make regarding um, the changes that we've done. So let me close that draft. And then going on the next one are assignments. And it's the same thing. It just takes me back to that previous page that we were in and it will show who's here unassigned that doesn't have an assigned seating. And I can actually add them to a desk and assign them to that. Obviously all these desks that are available for assignment are taken as you can see from unavailable. So you you or I would have to go back into the system and actually add those seatings to be able to add additional employees. And then this probably is something that might change in the future. Maps is here down here, but it's actually up here as well. And it's just new. Um, I think with the changes that they're making, it's just, they're trying to make it easier for everyone. And it, it took me a while to figure it out. I was like, why am I seeing two maps? But it's the same thing. Um, so let's log into that, and this will actually show us if it opens our points of interest. And here you're actually able to, actually there is, I know we saw the defibrillator, so let me add that, and we actually have it somewhere out here. 
that's actually how easy it is. We just add it there. Um, you're able to zoom in and make those changes. You can edit, remove. If I do want to name it something else, that's up to my choice and to make those changes. Um, if I oops, if I do want to move it again, just honestly click and drag. I honestly find the system as playing with like virtual Legos. It's really simple to create your own dream house in a way, or even Barbies, yeah, and move it and arrange it to your liking. It's it's super friendly in that perspective where it just makes it easy for you to mold it to what you need. As you can see here, we do have a printer here. It might actually, and like if you do have different names regarding printers, that probably would be super helpful to know which ones which. Since um, not these are actually conference rooms, if there's no name within those conference rooms or anything tied to it, since we're not using the system for conference rooms, we're just using it for desks and um, collaboration area, that would be great to add probably here the actual name of that printer or the IP address or any useful information. So let me save this and that will actually be published once it's actually saved. Yay. So I made that change within our system and that's that regarding maps. It's very simple and easy. You can click and drag regarding your changes and you're good to go. So let's go back to office and go to our last section, layout. So layout is basically creating your desks. And as you can see here, all of these desks are groups. These are our admin offices, and those are the ones that are assigned to some of our em employees here at NOIT. These are hoteling, and this is our help desk area. All desks that you put within the system do have to be grouped. It would not let you save the desks that you add in until you group them. So basically group, grouping just means that it, it needs to have a title. What is this desk belonging to? Or is there a department or team that can use it? Or is this area being called something? Um, so these up here, you can add a space, which we are not doing. That will be for the conference rooms. And if you do need anything like that, reach out to assist and we'll be able to get you with an outlook. These are the different ways of adding desks. Um, I don't think I've seen any of these special desks within our department, so I have not used those. Um, but it makes it easier regarding having a copy and paste or add one by one. If you have a group of desks, you can just click on that. That's actually your outfit area. Let's put this right here. You'll add your six, six desks in that. And as you can see, they turn red because they are not grouped. So basically they are un unnamed and then groups. So I don't even get to publish a button to work until that is done. So this is just great reminder to know that these should be assigned to some, I guess, group or department or area, depending how you're using this for in order to move forward. So I've highlighted them to create a group. Basically these are my test pods. So let's just put test in there. If all of these have a amenity that they all are the same, I would just click on my amenities. Let's say they all have a desktop computer and dual monitors. If not all of them have that, I would have to click on them individually. You will still see the ones that are the same for the ones that I selected for all six, and you'll be able to add a special amenity. Let's say only that one has a parking pass. So maybe people will be fighting over that one. <laughs> and as you can see, this one doesn't have the parking pass, that one does. And honestly, after that, you can, if you were to do a simple single one, you'll be able to rotate them as well. This is rotating the whole six desk, um, and you're able to just click and drag depending to your pleasing liking of the, whether you're, what your layout is in the department. So once that is done and completed, You'll just click publish and that will go live immediately. I don't think I want people to actually see that, but you get the point. So once I am completed with that, everyone will be able to see those desks and research them. Um, I do like to mention, and this is something that I learned recently, that there are different types of hoteling. So there's hoteling. Hoteling is basically doing multiple dates and hot desks are those for that are just meant for one day reservations. You cannot do continuous reservations within the system or reserve it for more than one day. So let me discard 
this. And these are your main points here in your Office homepage. Uh, these are the ones I get to play with the most and trying to figure out how to work within the system and get situated. But on top of that, I get to use our manage. And this is basically where we see all the information that your admin users will be doing in the back end and making sure everyone has the correct access and buildings and just everything and anything you'll need in order to make sure that the department that's using this system, it's able to do what they want it to do. As you can see here, once I click on this, it takes me to the AD building and it actually uses the pinpoint location and it takes you and shows you in the map where that is. You have the address here. And if I click on this, you'll be able to see a beautiful picture in which this is super helpful if people forget what the building looks like. Here it is. You'll be able to see and recognize it once you're on campus. These are the hours that the building has itself. Um, I know we tried at first in making it open 24 hours, which the system could not understand why it's open from 12 a.m. to 12 a.m. It did not want people to be here all day. So, and I mean, I don't blame, I don't want to be here all day either. So this is edited, oops, let's go back. I don't need help. Well, maybe I do. <laughs> oh, so going back into the AD building, this is the information that you get regarding the floor. There's only one floor that we have. We don't, OIT does not own the complete AD building. We only have one floor within there. Um, this is regarding the spaces. If we were to use conferences or not, so ignore that. Desk, desk spaces, it's active. Um, we don't really have any desks put in place regarding AD since we're still working on trying to figure out and get situated on that end. Um, and that's honestly about it. This this is just scheduling policies and information of how to work with that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, other than that, these are just simple information. People, you upload them individually. Um, I, one good thing to know is that these employees who are uploading the system with single sign-on do not get an invitation email. You basically have to notify them. And that's something I learned after, um, which was not nice. but. I mean, we're, we're all learning as we go through this groups. You'll see here that we have the research and OIT team, the roles, this is where we create the roles, amenities. If you do want to add a different amenity, you have to click here before you actually add it to a desk. So it has your basic amenities and your additional ones that you can add and create as you go within the system. And in order for me to stop talking, I'm going to just pause because I think this was a lot of information for you guys to soak in. <laughs> This is incredible information. I think we do have a couple of uh, just clarification questions. Um, yeah. I did see that came through in the chat that people just want to make sure that they're understanding correctly. So uh, one question is, uh, when, when will people be given access? And just to clarify, no one is required to use this system. It is a system that is available to you as a tool should your department want to select it. It is not something that is, is being pushed down or required for every department to use. Every department may not need it or may not have a, a use case for it. But we want to make sure that you're aware that it is available. And if your department should want to use it, we will be emailing information out about it in the spring with how you can request it and how you can get more information on becoming an admin and setting it up within your particular area should your department want it. So don't in any way feel like this is a requirement or that we're pushing it. This is just an option for you. And if it's a tool that's useful and it helps you manage those fair spaces, then that's great. Then we have been able to fill that need. And we realize that's not a, that's not a use case for everybody on campus. Um, I'm glancing to oh, one of the questions was when you're presenting Briz data on um, the bottom right corner was that blue. It looked like the little chat bubble. Is that just a chat if you would need assistance? Yes, with the and system? they're actually yeah, they're actually very fast and quick and getting responses. I know we've had we we forgot our user ID login, which is UT Dallas. How could we not remember UT <laughs> Dallas? So we asked them within the chat, and they're like, "It's UT Dallas." I'm like, "Oh, okay, that makes it easier." Um, so yes, and any questions that you have within the system and need a quick answer, you reach out to them here and they'll be able to get that answer. 
Perfect. And I know we're working on um, a website and other information and so what we call KBs, which are knowledge-based uh, articles, to get information out to you so you can get kind of a, a one-sheet guide. I don't think that any of those are live just yet since this is still, uh, the product is still in testing, so we don't have a kind of a play-by-play -play of how to use it yet as a document because as soon as we produce that, it's going to be invalid because we're tweaking and making changes. So once we continue to refine and develop this so that's going to meet your needs best and meet UTD's needs, we're going to work on getting those communications out to you. But it'll probably be after Christmas break. I know we've got some people that are like, well, how do I tell my supervisor right now? I want it. It's great. Um, the drag and drop. I think you had them at Legos. I know you had me because everything is awesome. Everything <laughs> that you shared was awesome. And it's so easy to build and to develop these custom setups for individuals. Um, so, so yes, yeah, so we don't have anything just yet. Not a, not a how to convince your boss to shoot, but we will absolutely work on that and ensure that you have the information that you need to request this and to get that process. I'm glancing to. Okay, mm -hmm. so we talked about the chat bubble. People, they like seeing that so that if they need help, that that's another resource that's there. Yes, and they're very quick and we love it. <laughs> that's great. That's great. Um, and then uh, another question, I'm going to kick back to you real quick, Rosetta. Mm -hmm. Multiple admins, can multiple people be listed as administrators if you would just reinforce that real quick? Yes. Definitely. I am an admin. We have about four other employees within our system that are admins as well. And within admins, you can have owners um, and that gives them an extra additional access to certain things within the background as well. And I know we may not be ready to release this information yet, so um, I won't let out too many secrets, but there is the question since we did have, you know, the cowboys in those specific rooms and <laughs> we all know UTD is very space themed. So there is the question that's lingering on minds. Inquiring minds want to know, is this system also going to be receiving kind of the space themed name or is that where we need to just press end and nobody? <laughs> Um, I think the beauty of this is that every department can have a theme of their liking. Um, we made it sports theme within OIT, but if HR department wants to make it galaxy related in space, it's totally open. So just because I have sports on my end, that does not mean that you will have to live within a sports cube or desk. You'll be fine. You can make it to what you want. Um, I know every other building has different themes that they have. I know with OIT, we have rivers. Um, we are looking and renaming these into rivers or something similar to that type of theme. So it's definitely moldable, changeable. You can do whatever you like within it. Well, I know I promised that in Teams Live that your video and your audio are muted as an attendee, but you saying yes to that naming convention, I could just hear a resounding applause from people watching live that are so excited that they're going to get to customize their space, customize their name, and have it fit and meet their, their unique needs. So I think this was an absolute home run. Thank you so much, Brazeta. I, I love your absolute brilliance and your just calm way of explaining this new system and sharing it with us so that we can understand how it can apply, how we can manipulate it to meet our needs. And I truly and sincerely appreciate you taking on this very huge project to ensure that UT Dallas and all of our areas are going to be able to, to customize this experience, this new normal of work. And I, I love that sharing locations because my team is, is also using this system. And so my students, when they come in, they can fight over and pick whichever desk has those particular amenities that they prefer, whether it's a, a standing desk or a particular camera or the, the coveted ring light. Um, they're able to adjust based on what their needs and preferences are and pick a space um, based on those amenities listed. So thank you so much. Y'all, um, I'm gonna go ahead and pull up our final closing slide because I know we're just about out of time here. But uh, if you've been with us before, you know we always ask for feedback. We, we want to know uh, your thoughts and your feelings on how the presentation went. 
If you have uh, any insights for us on what we could change or adjust to make it better so that it's easier to understand or more relatable for you, we want to know that. If you have shout outs um, for anybody, I know Briz I feel like Brizada did such a tremendous job uh, her first time getting to present with us during Teams Tips. And this is an incredible product that has been finally thought out and, and tested and is nearly ready for release for everybody. So I'm I'm excited to provide that service to campus. I know Brizada was really excited to be able to share that with you all today. So take a moment, submit your feedback. You can scan the QR code. We're also going to have it available in our chat. So if you just want to click on that direct hyperlink, you can also do it there. We will email out a copy of this recording just as soon as we finish um, putting up some little finishing touches on it, and it will be available on our YouTube channel. So you can go back and review any of this content. So thank you again. Remember, if you need anything, we're here to help.